Welcome back to Stop the Clock with Brad. Thanks for uh, watching the video. Hope you find some good value today. If you enjoy it, give me a thumbs up. I'd appreciate it. it. Helps get this information out to more people. And if you really like it, subscribe to the channel. Uh, we have a Facebook uh, group called Stop the Clock, where we talk about all these issues, share information, and support each other. It's a great place if uh, you're into the carnivore movement or the aging backwards, living as long as possible movement. Uh, feel free to hop in there to search up Stop the Clock and uh, ask you to join and we'll get you in there. What I want to talk about this week is something that I had not thought about really until I came to Turkey is lamb, right? Depending on where you live in the world, lamb is very available or it's not very available. Uh, where I'm from in the South in America, most grocery stores have no lamb. If you go to a higher end one, you'll find leg of lamb and things like that, but nothing like what you see uh, here in Turkey or in a lot of uh, Muslim or Jewish countries. 25%, over 25% of the world cannot eat pork due to uh, relig religious reasons. And then you look at a country like India that does not eat beef uh, for the same reason. So in America, where our carnivore uh, diet is mainly beef, that's what you see on most carnivore channels don't show a lot of diversity with meat because it's all red meat, red meat, red meat, because you can get everything you need. But when you come to some countries, you'll look and you'll see, well, there's not as many cows here. And there's, it's a good thing, there's no factory farming in some of these countries. America's just been taken over by factory farming. We're trying to fix that with regenerative farming, but it's not taking hold and the majority of the country is still eating very processed, grain heavy, uh, really not that healthy uh, beef. You come somewhere like Turkey, there's not as many cows. Beef is available, but it's more expensive but lamb is plentiful. And so in a lot of these countries, lamb is there. And so it's something you're going to eat. And so the more I went to the market and saw it, I'm like, hey, this is good. I enjoy grilling it and cooking it, but how's it affecting my health? So I wanted it to take some time today. Let's look and compare beef to lamb. So here we go. So if you look at a 3.5 ounce serving of lamb versus a 3.5 ounce serving of beef, you'll see that the lamb has a few more calories. That can be a good or bad thing, depending on what you're trying to achieve with body composition. It has more fat, which for someone that's on the keto or carnivore diet, that's actually a good thing. The saturated fat is a little higher, also a good thing for us, as is the monosaturated fat and the polyunsaturated fat. So all the, all the fats are there for you. The protein is a little lower, so not, not by much. Um, it's almost it's almost even. Niacin is a little higher, 7% higher. Uh, zinc is lower, but then selenium is higher. Uh, the iron is almost one for one. And you look at the vitamin B12, which we love for our energy, it's almost exactly the same. But then one of the other big things in it is the uh, CLA, that is conjugated uh, lineoic acid. And CLA has been shown in many studies with varying degrees to help support uh, body composition. Uh, Grass-fed animals like lamb or cows um, that are pasture-raised have this stored in their muscle. And it's a very popular uh, supplement. It's been out, at least I've known since the 90s, I was taking it back in the 90s. Uh, for helping burn fat and have achieving a better body composition. Um, but we all know that if you can get nutrition from animals versus a laboratory, how much better that is. And so the lamb is something there that can really give you more CLA. And again, studies have shown uh, that can help you with your body composition. Now, if you look at lamb, how do you cook it? Well, if you get a lamb chop or a lamb steak, you treat it uh, just like you would beef. If you're gonna grill it, uh, you're gonna grill it. If you're gonna stop it, chop it up, you can chop it up. You can grind it. 
up and use it. Use ground lamb just like you would uh, ground beef. Um, it's a great, what I've seen now, because I've been here in Turkey for over a month, I've been eating it every week. I see no change in my energy. I've had some actually surprising performances in the gym. Don't know if that's the lamb or just the lifestyle here overall. Uh, but I've seen no really drop off, no drop off in my performance, no change in my energy. So that really is signaling to me is just for, as far as how I feel, substituting lamb out for beef hasn't uh, affected my performance at all. So I wanted just to uh, make this and show you that, hey, lamb is a actual very nice alternative to beef if that's something that you want to do just for diversity of diet because sometimes we want to eat something besides beef or if you're in a country where you either can't eat beef or that beef is just out of reach price wise where you can't eat it as often as you would and lamb is just a little bit more affordable because it's more plentiful there so short video this week but i wanted to get that out thanks for uh, watching the video and thanks for uh, coming to the channel and remember, aging is a choice.